my friends told me that everything is relative and now I don't understand my place in the universe. <gasps> oh, physics penguin, that's okay. It is true that everything is relative, that we can't compare ourselves to other people because our experience is different, right? And it turns out that that can also be true in physics. The theory of relativity. We'll put physics penguin down while we chat about the amazing theory of relativity, which actually has two parts. But first, I want to back up. So the goal of physics is to come up with universal truths that can be applied no matter where you happen to be measuring things. So in physics, we call that a coordinate system. And you might have seen this in math, where you set up an axis and you're like, this is the y-axis and this is the x-axis. So in physics, we use a lot of coordinate systems where we're like, okay, I'm standing at the origin and I need to go to the library, which is over here. And so, you know, we can walk, maybe this is north and this is east. And so basically because of our coordinate system, we can figure out directions to the library. But if we are asking, how do I get to the library from downtown? Uh, we are going to need a different set of directions and maybe um, our starting location will now be downtown or we might say uh, we might try to figure out if downtown is over here how we could map that on our existing coordinate system but generally speaking physics likes to kind of place the observer at the center and then kind of calculate uh, from things uh, calculate things from there and that's really what a coordinate system is and so no matter where you are in the city you can calculate how to get to the library because you know how to use this coordinate system. This is a pretty simple example, but the theories in physics are just like this. You can, uh, you can take the theory of gravity and you can ask what happens if you take an object and put it on the moon? How does the theory of gravity interact with that object? What happens if you take that object and put it on the sun? Now your coordinate system is changing, but the equations are the same. That's pretty much the foundation of physics, is trying to figure out what those equations are. Now, the theory of relativity is really wild because even though the equations are the same, things look different depending on where and when you are and what your personal frame of reference is. Okay. So there's actually two parts of relativity. The first is called special relativity because we're very special. So special relativity, number one, special, yay. Relativity. This deals with objects moving at constant speeds. So if I'm like running along and I'm running a constant 10 minute mile or whatever, I'm jogging along, that means I am moving at constant speed. We're not talking about acceleration. And it turns out that when you're moving at constant speed, some interesting things happen, particularly when you are moving close to the speed of light. Now, the first kind of funky thing that uh, in special relativity that Einstein uh, discovered is that the speed of light, or C, that's the variable. Oh, look, it's a sideways smiley face, is a constant. No matter how fast you move, you will always measure the speed of light as being three times 10 to the eighth meters per second, which is really fast, very, very, very fast. Now this is actually really wild because imagine you are in a car and you're driving and you look over and you see a car next to you, you're traveling 60 miles an hour and they're traveling 62 miles an hour. Now you're both actually going very close to the same speed, right? But the other car is going slightly faster. From your perspective, it looks like the other car is just traveling, you know, maybe a little bit faster than you. But from a person standing on the road, you're both going really fast. But what this says is that even if you are in that car and you're traveling next to the speed of light, the speed of light is going pew. So it still looks really, really fast compared to your perspective, even if you're traveling fast. So that's really wild because it's like, wait, that doesn't make sense. And the answer is yes, it doesn't. It's, it's wonky and weird. But this is why it's fun, right? The next thing that is wonky and weird is that time slows down. Slows down, comma, when fast. 
<laughs> Fess. <clears throat> I'm going to take the math and turn it into simple language. This is also known as time dilation. And this is a real thing. We actually have to account for the fact that objects that are moving super duper fast have a slower clock. So a satellite is a really good example of this. Satellites move way faster than we do here on the Earth, on the surface of the Earth. Um, and so we actually have to account for that difference in speed because the clocks in the satellite are moving much slower than the clocks down on Earth. But we need them to sync so that we can send information back and forth. And so we have to use special relativity to do that. Super duper cool. I'm going to pick a different color because why not? So we'll switch to yellow for the last two interesting things of special relativity. Okay, so the next funky thing, um, and if you watch my last video on space time, and if you didn't, go watch it. It's really fun. You'll know that time and space are linked. So what do you think is the next funky thing with special relativity? If you're moving fast, time slows down. What do you think happens when you're moving fast to space? Ooh, yeah, totally. So um, we'll say length uh, shrinks or contracts. This is also called length contraction, comma, when fast. So it turns out if you move fast enough, you can fit a 10 foot pole into a nine foot barn. Why are we fitting poles in barns? I don't know. It's just an interesting problem uh, to, to kind of apply the theory of special relativity um, to length contraction. Um, so yes, actually, if you move fast enough, objects that are measured um, with a certain length will look shorter when you're moving faster from a person that is not moving relative to you. So there's some funny bad jokes that you could make with that. Anyway, um, okay, and then the last one that I need to check my notes for because there's a lot of things I had to remember. Okay, yes. Um, and then the final one is that mass increases um, when speed increases. So this is actually pretty wild too. So the faster you move, <clears throat> the more mass you have if you happen to stand on a scale. And we see this with particles um, as well as other objects. So that's special relativity. Super cool. Lots of wild counterintuitive things happen when you are moving at a constant speed that is very, very close to the speed of light. Um, and generally in physics, we talk about that speed as being some percentage of the speed of light. So maybe like 99% of C is very, 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 very fast. We have not even gotten close to that, but particles can do that. And so we can uh, verify these uh, hypotheses. And now we can basically say they've been verified so many times. It's what we call a theory. I mean, that there's a lot, a lot, a lot of evidence from a lot, a lot, a lot of people um, that have determined that when particles are traveling very fast, you see all of these things. And then also satellites and shenanigans like that. Um, unfortunately, this one, the length of shrinking, is a lot harder because it's hard to accelerate objects to the speed of light. Okay, so that's special relativity. Super duper cool. And we can do some of the calculations in another video because surprisingly the math is like fairly accessible. And you're like, I'm scared of math. You got it. It's fine. Math is just a language. Okay, so what about general relativity? General relativity is where a lot of the stuff about gravity comes into play. Um, and so this is actually where um, Einstein kind of discovered or um, and will postulated, hypothesized, that gravity actually, objects with mass, they bend space-time. So mass bends space-time. So cool. And so the canonical example that you will, might have heard of is like putting a bowling ball on a bed and the bed sinks down. So that's like a large planet bending space time. And then if you were to like flick a marble into that, or actually a trampoline, that's a, that's a good one. A bowling ball and a trampoline is really going to bend the trampoline, right? Then if you put a marble in there, the marble will 
roll around or if you played with those marvel runs that have the hole in the middle that's basically what a black hole does is it bends space time so much it kind of rips through space time and then objects rotate around that um so mass bends space time and that's kind of what gravity is doing which is super wild and then because of this curvature of space time space time's not flat there's all kinds of objects in space making bumps or you know some black holes making some really intense curves in space time and so objects can't travel in a straight line through space time because it's curved it's like trying to walk a, um, across a bowl you can't float in the air and so you have to walk on the curve of the bowl and so objects in space have these curved trajectories so objects travel in curved paths whoops my r's look like these curved paths so cool and i spelled paths with two t's okay <laughs> here we are um okay and then this is also where um special relativity and general relativity overlap a little bit because a lot of it deals with the weirdness of space time and the weirdness of um speed and acceleration so time actually slows down um, when you are close to a mass of objects. Close to massive objects. Ah, objects. There we go. <laughs> okay. Um, so this is also known as gravitational time dilation so it's basically the same thing that happens when you're traveling very very fast but in this case it's mass that slows down your internal clock so this actually means if we were on a heavier planet um the time that we measure might be different than the time that a person on earth might measure and finally acceleration has the same effects as gravity and so you will have experienced this if you are in a car that accelerates or if you're in a plane that is taking off because you get pushed back into your seat right that's basically what gravity is doing to us and so the force on an object um, that we feel or that an object feels is equivalent um, to um, uh, between gravity and acceleration and so that is really interesting to me because it means that acceleration which is basically your speed is increasing over time your speed is not constant it is increasing um, or deceleration your speed is decreasing over time that that has a similar effect as gravity and so um, that is kind of the last big one acceleration is kind of similar to gravity I love relativity, special in general. I didn't study general relativity a ton because the math is really wild and hard. And I took kind of the particle route um, where you don't really have to deal with general relativity. You can be like, it's over there dealing with the big objects. It's fine. We're going to ignore it. Um, but I love these these ideas and these theories because they're so wild. Like, what do you mean time isn't constant? What do you mean space isn't constant? It's relative. It depends on your frame of reference. It depends on your coordinate system, which really means it depends on how fast are you moving? How close are you to massive objects? Um, and you know, how, like, where are you and when are you in this fabric that we call space time? And so, yes, it is actually true. Everything is relative. When you ask how fast is something going, you have to say, well, compared to what, right? Because if you ask how fast is the, you know, how fast is the car going? Or I like to kind of, I like to use this example. There's a fly in a car and the fly is flying at five miles an hour. And you're like, well, how fast is the fly traveling? But then you're like, is it the fly's frame of reference? Because the fly technically from its point of view, it's not really moving. Um, but then if you ask from the passenger in the car, you'd be like, well, the fly is flying around at five miles an hour. But then if you ask from a person standing on the road, it's going to be the speed of the car plus the, the fly, the fly's speed. But then if you're like, what about an alien on a different planet? And then you have to calculate the speed of the planet and it gets really wild and kind of fun to think about. 
that like depends on whose perspective you're asking it from. So, so fun to think about. And also it's just like, holy stars, this simple question just got overly complicated. What happened? And the answer is yes, yes it did. And that's why physics is really cool. And I love how it can teach us to ask really specific questions because sometimes we need to ask really specific questions and clarify what we mean because it's all relative. All right, thank you very much for hanging out and learning about relativity with me. Please let me know if you have any questions about special or general. The math in general is a little bit tricky, so I might gloss over that or just skip it entirely, but I would love to do some mathematics with time dilation and length contraction because those are really fun and silly. And just, I love when the math tells us like when we can read these equations and be like, whoa, that's wild and weird. And we can calculate it and be like, holy stars, that's amazing. And then we can apply those equations to real life and be like, oh, it solved a problem of satellites being way off with their clocks and us not knowing where they are. So yay for theory and applied. Excellent. All right. I will see you next time, my dear friends. Bye.